Communication. Communication. That is indeed one of the important things that we have to look at in Christianity. Corrupt communication. What is communication? It's actually about interaction. It's about an act of giving words or giving information. And it can be verbal or non-verbal. It can be by sign. It can be also by the sound and it actually the way that we speak. But then, some communications are corrupt. And what do we mean by corrupt communication? When you start to lie, when you start to gossip, when you start to make some profanity, saying certain things that we call the four-letter words, or you make some signs which are not Christianly, that you cannot even expect to see among Christians. But let's look at it this way. What about countries that among the people, they just speak that word, and it's part of nature, their natural language, to just speak that word. What do we do? What do Christianity say about that? And indeed, what example do we have in the Bible about people that actually use corrupt words, corrupt sign, and in short, corrupt communication? Are there consequences? Are there prices to pay? With me on this program, are men of God that we discuss it. And that is why we are going to look at lesson 34 of the Sunday School Manual written by Daddy in the Lord Pastor E.A.R. Deboye. So it's going to be a very wonderful session of teaching today because there is someone here that his attitude to the use of language will change. And then you get closer to God by the end of this meeting. Stay tuned. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29. And I read, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of a divine that may minister grace unto the hearers. Interesting verse of the scripture. But when we come back, we analyze this. Most of the time, we need a session of prayers privately in a quiet and sacred place without any form of interruption, be it a group prayer, personal prayer session, family prayer session, whichever. Now you can have your own time, space and chance to talk to your Creator without any disturbance at the Mount Carmel Prayer Village, which is situated at Okeso along Ife Road, Ifewara, Oshun State. Don't bother about accommodation. 
there are different forms of accommodation we have for you. There is a two bedroom flat, chalet which is a room and a parlor, single room, dormitory, conference hall, sanctuary, prayer hall, prayer hut and 12 disciples. All these are available at affordable prices. For more inquiries, visit www.mtcamelprayer.com. You can send an email to mtcamelprayerv at gmail.com. You can also call plus 234-815-877-8513. Psalms 107 verse 28 to 30. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired heaven. Prayer is the master key. Let me tell you that today is a program with a difference because men of God in the house and the ones that are, I need, you know him so well and that is Pastor Israel Kolusha Day. You are welcome to this program. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Viewers at home, the Lord bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. Amen. And also we have a gentleman. He's the first time on the program and indeed is also uh, a Sunday school teacher in uh, Oasis Parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God in uh, Presentable of South Africa, and uh, his name is my brother Sunday. Brother Sunday, what is your surname? My name is Sunday Irekpe. Irekpe. Yeah. Irekpe. What is the meaning of that? Um, it means a strong man. A strong man. Yeah. Oh, that's great. A strong man. Now we have a strong man in the house, Hallelujah. and I believe that the the one that is inside him is greater than he that is in the world. And I believe that today, someone that listens to this program is going to be blessed, mm -hmm. and I believe it's you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's start with a word of prayer. Brother Sunday, the strong man, can you pray for us? Amen. Let us pray. And so, our righteous God, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be even among the living this day. Father, even as we look into your word, we pray that you enlighten our minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Help us, O oh God, give us the grace to speak words that are edifying, O oh God. Amen. And I pray for as many that are looking, O oh God, at this program right now. I pray, O oh God, that you give them the seasoned tongue to speak words that I define unto you. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I pray God will change our tongues in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the topic, once again, is called Corrupt Communications Among Christians. And whether we like it or not, that is one of the things that we see so much all around the Christendom. And you see so many people using languages that is not edifying. And let that take us straight. Straight away, let's go straight to our Bible passage, which is taken from the book of Colossians chapter 3. And I'm going to read from verse 8 to 9. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8 to 9. But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, saying that you have put off the old man with his deeds and also together i want to read the memory verse which says let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the errors ephesians 4 verse 29 pastor Istra, no. the passage they're actually talking about the same thing Yep. The passage as well as the memory verse. Now, when we look at this, corrupt communication. Okay. What is corrupt communication? Thank you. You know, any just like we know, corrupt means uh, profane. Mm. Corrupt means something that is bad, something mm. that is evil. And then bringing it to communication. Co communication in this regard means our speech and our attitude. So when we are talking of corrupt communication, we are talking of evil or bad speech and attitude. Mm. Christians speaking evil words, blasphemies, lying, mm. corruption, slangs, mm. curses. These are the things that the Bible says we should not allow to proceed out of our mouth. Praise the Lord. Uh, brother, uh, brother Sunday, you think it's, it's, it's possible for Christians not to be corrupt in their communication? 
Definitely, um, we find cases where we have Christians. Jesus actually spoke, he said, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Mm. Now, when you discover that Christians are in the attitude of speaking profanity, when they, from time to time, their conversation are more of one that does not glorify God. Mm. Because you find out that many Christians today have, they are not firm in their faith. We have a situation where we have so many lukewarm Christians. Christians that cannot stand to, to I mean, that, that don't pronounce their faith in Christ. And, and that is where we have situation whereby we have Christians that they are not cooked in the world because mm. it boils down to having much of the word. Mm. Because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm. So it is what we have inside of us that comes out of us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Pastor Estre, I was looking at the passage that we just read now, and I see that part of the corrupt communication, communication, bad communication comes from anger. You see, when people are angry, angry they say a lot of things, wrong, malice. Mm -hmm. You discover that you are not talking to me, I'm not talking to you, mm -hmm. and this thing begins to boil up, and one day it's that going is, to erupt like a volcanic eruption. That is true. And you see, all these uh, malice, blasphemy, mm -hmm. is part of it. And you, we stay in a society that, I just don't want to mention that society now. Mm. When they are growing up, they use the profanities. The F word, mm. they use it a lot. And it's actually a part of their communication. Mm. But the question is, can this be changed? Yeah, you know, just like the Bible has said, you know, as Christians, our standard is not the environment we find ourselves. Mm. Our standard is the word of God. Mm. What the word of God condemns is condemned, even mm. if the word applauds it. Mm. It's true, when we go to the streets, we find people using F language, this and that, slangs that mm. are unglorifying to God, blasphemies, evil words, especially words spoken out of anger, just like you said. Now, this does not mean that we Christians, we have to submit ourselves to their standard. Mm. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Praise the Lord. The word of God dwells in us, and we must show the world an example that Christianity is not just for fun, it's a reality. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anywhere you are, just practice your Christianity. There was a time I was driving, and I don't know what happened. Possibly I cut the man off, or I don't know what happened, but what I discovered was that there was, it was, if I'm not, I, if I'm not a, crush, a Christian, there will have been what we call road rage. Mm -hmm. And this man came and drove beside me and pointed the finger. I can't do that on the program. Okay. He pointed the finger. But we have a situation in South Africa when things like that happen and you see exchange of gunshots. That is what they call road rage. But I just laughed. And when I thought back at it, I said, what made me laugh is because of the Spirit of God that dwells inside me. And I pray that whatever situations that you find yourself as a child of God, that inner man will come forth strong Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We go straight our, to our outline. Our first outline is entitled Biblical Examples and the Consequences. The first one, A, Examples of Corrupt Communications. Uh, Brother Sunday, Examples According to the Bible. Let's look at it. We have a whole lot of them. Like what we have here in the in the content, we, we can see that we have a whole lot we have backbiting, gossip, murmuring and the likes. We can count and run out of count actually when it comes to the subject of corrupt communication. Mm -hmm. But it all boils down to the fact that what is God expecting of me as a believer? Because that is what we should come to terms with at the end of this program. Mm -hmm. We should be able to come to the term of saying, as a believer, am I supposed to speak profanity? Mm. What does God expect of me whenever I find myself in a tight situation like the example you cited? I've also been in a situation like that. This one was even worse. The guy came out of the car, I was driving, the guy just came out of the car mm. and stood and was like, what is wrong? And I just drove past him like nothing happened. Mm. So it takes so much depth of the Holy Spirit to be able to avert such kind of um, confrontation. confrontation. Mm. Because oftentimes as believers, in as much as we are Christian, that does not exclude us from this temptation. Mm. 
mm. of speaking corrupt words. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. As a Christian, it does not exclude us from those environmental factors. Now, let's look at these people. Because we, he made mention of backbiting, gossip, and memory. Yeah. And we have an example of Aaron and Miriam. That's right. You remember that Aaron was a man of God. Mm -hmm. Miriam was the sister, mm -hmm. sister to him. And basically, when you read the Bible, you discover that these people, they also hear from God. <laughs> but they gang up against Moses. That's right. Now, how do we deal with that in Christianity? Is it not things that happen in churches? When people gang up against each other and gossip about each other. That's right. That's right. You know, they, they, they do it a lot. And uh, it's unfortunate that many people don't even know that it is part of the corrupt communication we are talking about. Gossiping another brother in the church, mm. ganging up and forming cliques and murmuring against the pastor, murmuring against the uh, uh, leaders of the church, mm. gossiping and backbiting. Mm. These are things that we have been seeing in the church. And if some people don't know it is enough to take this person to hellfire, mm. it is not because the person went to commit adultery or fornication that is already committing sin. All these things, the words of our mouth, and you know the Bible says that every idle word that we speak, we give accounts That's true. of them. Mm. So including lying, jesting, some people mm. can make joke yes. of everything. You can begin to speak in fake tongues and, as if the uh, Holy Spirit is their age mate. These are, <laughs> these are corrupt communications. Okay, Sacred Pastor Israel. Pastor Israel, Pastor Israel, I know if I allow you to go on, you go on and on and talk about so many other amen, things. Amen. There's a clip I want you to watch because very many of us, we are affected by situations and circumstances around us. But well, let's see how this young man was able to overcome it. Enjoy this.
You are welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that clip. Now, what does that signify? What is it symbolic of? Brother Sunday, you watch this. It's interesting. Indeed. What does it tell you? Uh, you see, this clip, it's, it's so much because it tends to portray one fact that communication goes beyond spoken words. Mm. In other words, our verbal attitude plays a major role. Now, you could see the young man, he was being compelled but he seeked for faith and for i mean he seeked for god's help by praying mm. and that is why i say that over time what can make us overcome corrupt communication is when the inner man the bigger one inside of us speaks mm. it was by god's grace that he was able to overcome the the, the temptation from his friends pastor Isra. yeah just to add to what uh, brother Soli is saying you know at times it's good to be silent mm. if you discover that you don't have anything to say or if you say something you may say something that is out of point or out of does not give glory to the name of the lord mm. then you keep quiet mm. this young man was pressed to talk mm. but probably some of those influences that are coming from the system and the, the world and the things like that will have pushed him to say one or two things that is not giving glory to god but he just decided to keep quiet mm. and that's why the bible says he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life Praise the Lord. So at times, silence is the medicine of corrupt communication. Hmm. Mm. Silence, the medicine of corrupt communication. I love that. I'm going to tweet it. I make sure that people understand it. Silence is golden. And those that are actually being part of the School of Disciples, we understand that people that are humble, there is something so common about them. Silence. That's right. Silence. That's right. That's right. Silence. That's right. Silence. Yes. Now, what are those biblical examples? There are quite a lot of them. We talked about backbiting, gossip, and memory, as we see what's happening with Aaron and Miriam. That is in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. We also see examples of people that lie. That is corrupt communication. You lie a lot. Mm. Some people, when they lie, you just have to go and check and check again to know whether it's true. There are some people that are pathological liars. They can't do it without lying. And it's that a is, lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There are some Christians that lies a lot. Pastor, I mean, Brother Sunday. Yeah, um, that is what you, you see. The first question you asked, um, talking about the citing the example of Miriam and Aaron. Mm. For God's sake, these were men of God that were, that were hearing from God. But how come they find themselves in such kind of situation? Now, it boils down to one thing. Now, the word of God is for doing. Mm. It's not just to know this and to claim title, it's for doing. And the in-depth study of the word would also help us as believers to always live our lives to avoid corrupt communication. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some of these examples, you see cursing, as we see in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 5 to 7. And also see abusive words that are being spoken, blasphemy. And you see false witnessing and deceit. People bearing forth witness. All these you can give as examples of people that are actually involved themselves in corrupt communication, attitude, whatever they did, which was contrary to God. Mm. Now, let's go to another example that we have here, another outline which talked about consequences of corrupt communication. If people engage in corrupt communication, what are the consequences? Pastor Israel. Yeah. Are there no price to pay? You know, uh, there are serious consequences of corrupt communication. Apart from the fact that a corrupt communication may sow di discord among brethren, mm. that is seed of discord by becoming by gossiping and uh, backbiting and uh, mourning, it can cause discord among brethren. But it can also cause a form of this call between God and man. Separation. Separation, actually. yeah. Oh. Uh, my Separation. relationship with God, you know, if, if I come ahead and say one foul word, mm. except I don't have the Holy Spirit in me, mm. if I have the Holy Spirit in me, I go down. Mm. I begin to feel bad. The Spirit is grieved. Because mm. that's why the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. It's grieved. And continually doing that can quench the Spirit and separate me from God. And I do and I eventually backslide. That is what we call backsliding. Mm. So we need to avoid it because there are serious consequences to speaking corrupt communication. I want to put you on the spot now, Brother Sunday. I'm sorry for doing this, but let me ask you a question. If you go to the Bible, you discover that there are some people that 
they engage in corrupt communication and you god's you know this was decisive in judgment mm. but these days people still do it and they think god is silent what happened uh, i think one of the things is that um, we're in the dispensation of grace mm. and many a times you discover no wonder paul was speaking and he said shall we continue to uh, shall we continue in sin mm. and take the grace of god for granted now, over time, you discover people feel that, oh, they can always get away with it. But much more than they know that there is a bigger consequence. Mm. Like Pastor rightly said, that it causes a bridge, a separation between our relationship with God. Every mm. time we engage, except a person is not truly a you believer. Okay. That mm. is when you don't feel anything. You just take pleasure in lying. Mm. You just take pleasure in murmuring. But so long as we call ourselves Christians and believers, we always feel a gap. There is always like a gap between us and God whenever we engage in corrupt communications. There are a lot of people that are actually involved in this and I pray that they will change. Amen. And I remember that I was to Paul pray a prayer for the Israel. He said, my, my prayer and earnest desire for Israel and that they will be saved. Yes. He prayed that prayer and he went on to tell us that they have a zeal of God, but without mm. knowledge. Being ignorance of God's righteousness, they have gone to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. There are so many people that are doing this and they feel they are doing the right thing. And I pray that God will come into them and they will know they are doing wrong in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to the second outline, outline two, which talks about how to avoid corrupt communication. Pastor Istra, yeah. take for example, you have someone you love so much. I'm talking, I'm talking about a brethren. Yeah. But naturally, every Christian, when he sees people that are corrupt minded, especially in the use of word, mm -hmm. you shy away from that person. Mm -hmm. But how do you bring such a person to being in the right standing with God, especially when it comes to the use of words. Yeah, you know, if you happen to have a brother or a close person to you that is a, that is a, a, in the habit of speaking slangs and bad words, one of the ways you can, uh, first of all, you take it as a challenge to you to influence him, not for him to influence you, mm. because if if it is a distant person, you might just leave him alone, mm. let him and distance yourself from him. But because he is a close person, he's an insider, mm. not be, probably he's a family member, you have to find a way of using the word of God to influence him. And one of the ways is by you using right words mm. in every situation. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication. That is it's your responsibility mm. to let not allow that communication to come out of your mouth. Mm. You watch the mouth. Uh, uh, David was playing. He said, Lord, set a watch over my mouth. Mm. That is like a watchman. So that everything that is coming out of my mouth, I think about it mm. before I allow it to come forth. By so doing, you can influence the person to speak righteous words. And then you pray for the person to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll come back because there are quite a lot of talking points here and we will get to solutions. We have gotten one now. There are so many other solutions that are waiting. So don't go away. Most of the time, we need a session of prayers privately in a quiet and sacred place without any form of interruption. Be it a group prayer, personal prayer session, family prayer session, whichever now you can have your own time space and chance to talk to your creator without any disturbance at the mount carmel prayer village which is situated at okeso along ife road ifewara ocean state don't bother about accommodation there are different forms of accommodation we have for you there is a two-bedroom flat chalet which is a room and a parlor single room dormitory conference hall sanctuary prayer hall, prayer hut, and 12 disciples. All these are available at affordable prices. For more inquiries, visit www.mtcamelprayer.com. You can send an email to mtcamelprayerv at gmail.com. 
you can also call plus 234-815-877-8513. Psalms 107 verse 28 to 30. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired heaven. Prayer is the master key. Welcome back. We're talking about how to avoid corrupt communication. Now, Professor Sunday, as a young man, and I know that you are in the university, and you come across a lot of people, friends, colleagues, some of them Christians, some of them that are actually not born again, and um, yes, whether we like it or not, you will hear them. They will say things, and they will do things. But what advice, or how do you go about taking care of the way they communicate i mean how do you handle that kind of relationship and how can it affect your own side how can it affect the way they now compose themselves yeah thank you um i think the first thing first um over time we must come to the point of realizing that as christians our life is to portray the the word of god because the standard of every believer is the word. Mm. Now, it mustn't just be when I'm holding the Bible that people know that I'm a Christian. Mm. My lifestyle should speak. That's right. That's and right. that is one thing that can influence my friend. Mm. When you discover that my friend, for instance, I have a friend, I don't have, but I'm just giving an instance, mm. that a friend that speaks slangs. Mm. Now, you don't applaud such kind of slangs. You don't credit him for doing that. You don't praise him. Mm. Immediately he speaks such around you. I mean, there must be a point whereby if he does it around, he mustn't do it with you. Mm. I think that is one way we can use to help tame or help influence others from speaking corrupt words. Pretty because much. whether we like it or not, there are people that just take pleasure mm. in profanity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are quite a lot of um, biblical ways that we can deal with it. But uh -huh. as for me, Pastor Istra, what I do in the office, you see, I sit down, and some things happen. And most times, some people will call the attention and say, Pastor, did you hear what this person said? And I say, well, I wasn't listening. What is it? And sometimes you discover that they don't even want to say it oh. because it's a corrupt communication. Yeah. Oh. 
And most people, when they know I'm there, they keep quiet. They don't say those things. Which means our lifestyle should, you know, should Speak. rub yeah. off on the environment that you find, you find yourself. You find you. So what other ways do we think that we can help people, Pastor Israel? Yeah, you know, just like you said, we have to show them examples of what it means to be a Christian. Mm. In fact, if they discover that you are a, let me call it no-nonsense Christian, your yes is yes, your no is no, mm. they begin to respect you in that dimension. Mm. And when they come near you, they speak the right, the right word. word because they and if they speak the wrong word instead of laughing over it or jiggling over it you you start, correct them you correct them right there mm. next time they will be more careful mm. when they are with you so and then you need to be telling them the word of god mm. you know it's not actually when they speak that language that you have to speak to them the word of god mm. from time to time you are calling them with the word of god it shall be well with you mm. and god is with you god is on your side things are going to work well for you with all these positive words you are neutralizing their negative words mm. and very soon they will join your language praise the lord that is quite very good and that reminds me of what our zona mommy used to say yeah. that when people start gossiping about you or gossiping about others because there is something when people come to you and gossip and you listen to them don't think that is the end of it they will gossip about you also that's the truth and that is the bad communication you're encouraging that person by not telling them that keep it's quiet wrong. what you are saying what you are doing is wrong so we must come to the position of telling people the right thing that's right they come to you with stories you tell them that i'm not in a position to listen to your story yes whatever you are saying is it possible that you can say it in front of that person 100 percent. next time they won't come again yeah, they won't come definitely. again they won't come yeah. and when somebody lies tell them straight, straight. you are lying Finish. it's simple yeah had that in the lord uh pastor daramola the daddy in the region there was a time when he was teaching us on school of disciple he mentioned it one time that a man came and the man introduced a project to him and while he was still speaking the holy spirit whispered into his head that that man was lying and right there he told the man he said you are a liar you are lying and the man was surprised he said yes the holy spirit told me now that you are lying so please walk out right. the man did not come back yes. there are certain times that we have to be decisive this is the time that we need to be decisive Amen. praise the lord Amen. now quickly for just one or two minutes let's look at the spiritual i can say the spiritual ways that we can handle this the first one say you read you meditate and speak god's word as you see in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 which says you meditate on this word this word of the lord should not depart from your mouth what you are actually doing when you are doing this is you are cleansing your heart because mm. it is from your heart that your mouth speaks yeah. mm. jesus christ said from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks mm. so when you are reading the word of god you are soaking yourself so. with the word of god so that anything that comes the word of god comes out of it, it, it praise the lord when the, jesus was speaking mm. when his disciples were eaten with bare hands without washing and the pharisees were saying no these people are washing their hands and these people are eating without washing their hands but jesus answered and he said, it's not what goes into a man that defies him. Mm. It is what comes, comes out. out. So from time to time, we must take time to purge ourselves with, and the, word of God with the word of God and fill ourselves. Because I think that is one way we can also help others. Mm. Give them the word. Mm. Amen. A part of the Bible I love so much is Deuteronomy chapter 6, from mm. verse 4 to 8, when he was speaking, when the children of Israel just came out of Egypt. Now Moses was speaking. He said, feed, I mean, put the word, let the word be. A domain around you mm. when you go out speak the word wherever you find yourself speak the word i think that is one way in which we can abstain as believers from corrupt communication and that is, we're talking about believers now we're talking we talked about the friends now yeah. believers That's right. and how can prayer really help us prayer yeah prayer we can also engage in prayers too oh. because the bible says resist the devil mm. and he will flee because many times this thing boils down to the tactics the devil just make you feel like this thing is nothing mm. it's like a way of life you mm. can just say it nothing happens so prayer also can also help us especially if somebody probably some of our listeners grew up in a very very corrupt 
environment, environment where it is normal for yeah. kids to be speaking slangs here mm. and there and they're making uh, jest. Jest of jest of sacred things. Mm. Now, when such person becomes an right. adult, it becomes like a normal something. But with prayer, you can call on God. Lord, the spirit of profanity in my life, let it get out. Mm. Purge my tongue. Mm. Touch my, circumcise my tongue. Let my tongue be blessed mm. so that it Everything will not be like, like from one source good and bad water is flowing out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what we see in so many cases. Mm. But talking about that, one thing I also want to say is that our profession, or maybe I should use the word confession, confession. our confession should be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Which means when people say it is wrong, see the good thing behind it that's right because when people they look with the eyes of the world as things and say they cannot succeed you can mm. you cannot make it and those are the words those are corrupt words mm. but with god all things are possible for them that believe it that is the word of god mm. and i remember when i first got my job i never knew anything about accounting just fresh from school and i sat in front of computer i never even touched a computer right here in south africa and they said we are going to give you a computer and then you start doing um, reconciliation. I went to my God. I did not say, I cannot do it. I went to my God in prayer. I said, God, computer, I don't know what to do. And now they want me to do reconciliation for creditors. How do I do it? And God said, Kulu, Kulu, Kulu Tempa. Those are here that, I mean, you understand what I mean. And so I just relaxed. And God positioned me, they carried the computer and put it beside a lady that knows the computer. And I said, uh, sister, I don't know anything. He said, I will teach you. She taught me one day. Because of the zeal I had, I catch on. And before you know it, I was doing everything. Because the, the, the reconciliation, I did it that day. Amen. And when I came out, I felt like jumping up. And why was I successful? I went to God in place of prayer. And at the same time, my confession was positive. And that is why the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, that let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer every man. I pray that Lord will give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Israel, thank you for your time on the program. God bless you and God bless you. We ask to me in Jesus' name. Ah, uh, brother, Sunday, I'm still learning to pronounce your surname. <laughs> so by the time you come next on the program, maybe I will have perfected it. <laughs> but I don't want to kind of, you know, <laughs> mutilate the surname here. So you are brother, Sunday. Eric Penn. Eric Penn. Yeah. You are welcome to the program. Thank you and thank you for the privilege to be in the program today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' Amen. name. Viewers, this is your program Sunday School and we would like to have you once again as we go to the program next week. You're going to see men and women of God on this program and they are ready to actually give you the word of life. And uh, let me quickly say this, that you can use our YouTube account which is our TV World as well as go to our email account which is uh, Sunday School at RedemptionTM.tv Our Facebook account is there, that is our CCG. Uh, RCCG Sunday School. I almost got that wrong, but it's right. RCCG Sunday School. And uh, let me say this. This is advertisement for people that are in South Africa. Rosentenville and the environment. There's a place called Oasis Party. Be a part of the program there. And we have program at 180 Paris Street, Rosentenville. We have a program on Sundays, 9.30 a.m. and on Tuesday 6.30 p.m. and that is Tuesday we call Jesus Hour. As you come, you meet with Jesus. He's a divine encounter and you encounter him in Jesus' name. Let us see next week. If God tarries, we will meet again. It's probably in Jesus' name. Bye for now. Bye.